Choosing where you apply for medicine will decide whether you will get into medical school or not. With over 40 medical schools in the UK, it can be pretty difficult deciding where you want to study for the next five to six years. When I first applied, I didn't apply strategically and as a result, I did not get any offers. When I replied the second time, I made sure to carefully choose my universities and I managed to get three unconditional offers. In this video, I'll be going through exactly how to choose the right medical schools that will maximize the chance of you getting an offer so you don't make the same mistake as me. Now, before we get into how to choose the right medical schools, we need to understand the importance of applying strategically. One of the key reasons why med applicants don't get in is because they waste their medical school choices. They may be a bit too ambitious by applying to like all the Russell Group unis in London, which is actually what I did when I applied in my first application. And since I didn't really meet the entry requirements for any of those unis, I didn't get any interviews and as a result got rejected from all my medical school choices. While it is tempting to apply to the best medical schools, to apply strategically, you need to apply to the medical schools that is best for you. To help you make the right choices, I'll be going through five factors that you should take into account when picking your medical school choices. The first factor you should take into account is the university's entry requirements. You should look into the university's A-level and GCSE requirements and also see if they accept resets, if that's relevant to you. You should also see if you're eligible for a contextual offer as universities tend to give a lower A-level requirement and sometimes even a lower UCAT cutoff. UCAT score cutoffs are also another thing you need to look into. And personally, I think this is the most important entry requirement. Most medical schools will say you need a certain UCAT score or above. And if you apply with a UCAT score that's below that, you'll get rejected instantly. So it's really important to look into the university's UCAT cutoffs. My main advice is to apply to universities where you meet or exceed their entry requirements, so you're more likely to receive an interview. You can find the university's UCAT cutoff on their official website, or you can visit the UK CAT people's website where they have all the UCAT cutoffs listed for each university. UCAT cutoffs tend to increase or decrease each year, so make sure to keep that in mind when you're choosing your universities. The second factor you should take into account when picking your medical school is the teaching style. The three main teaching styles you may come across is traditional, problem-based learning, also known as PBL, and integrated. Starting with traditional, in your first few years of medical school, you mostly have lectures just to cover the content. And then in your last few years of medical school, you then have your clinical years where you have hospital placements, where you're able to apply the knowledge you've learnt in your first few years of medical school. The benefit of this teaching style is that it has a clear structure and helps you build a strong scientific foundation, which makes it easier to apply that knowledge later on when you start clinical placement. The downside is that there's less patient contact early on. So learning can feel a bit more passive and it means you also have less opportunities to develop your soft skills early on. This teaching style is good for students who want to learn all the content first and then apply it later on once they have a solid foundation. The second teaching style is problem-based learning. This teaching style mostly involves students getting organized into small groups and usually have to solve a patient case that's overseen by like a teacher or a lecturer. There is also a lot more self-directed learning in PBL. The benefit of this teaching style is that it improves teamwork, problem solving skills and independence which creates a lot more engagement. This teaching style is good for students who like to discuss and work together and also have a lot more control as well. The final teaching style is integrated. This teaching style is kind of like a mix between traditional and problem-based learning with also a lot more early clinical exposure. The benefit of this teaching style is that it offers a balanced approach because as you learn the content, you're able to apply it early on. This teaching style also offers a variety of different teaching methods. So you may have lectures at some point, seminars, and then case studies as well. The downside of this teaching style is that it can feel a bit overwhelming because there are quite a bit of different teaching methods. This teaching style is good for students who want a mix of both traditional and problem-based learning. 
as well as having early patient contact. I personally like integrated because of the early patient contact, which lets me develop my soft skills early on. So like my communication skills and my teamwork. However, there is no best teaching style. It's all about what's the best teaching style for you. Some people like the discussions in PBL, whereas others like the structure in traditional. And just some people like the mix or having both. The third factor when picking your university is the location and lifestyle of it. This can include things like the distance of the university from your home, what the campus is like or what the city life is like as well as the cost of living. For me the distance from home was probably the biggest factor because I didn't want to be too close where I had to commute but I didn't want to be too far from family. Make sure to take your time for the section because medicine is a long course where it ranges from five to six years so it's really important that you actually enjoy being there. The fourth factor you should look into is the interview style. There are two styles used to assess medical applicants, MMI and panel interviews. It's important to decide which one you'll perform better in to increase the likelihood of you receiving an offer post interview. Panel interviews tend to be just one long conversation with three interviewers in one room, whereas MMI tends to be made up of like six to eight different stations and in each station you have a different interviewer. I personally prefer MMIs because if you mess up one station, you can still do well in all the other ones as the interviewers don't know how you did in the other stations. So there's no bias towards you. And the final factor you should take into account is not being obsessed with the university's ranking or like their reputation. All UK medical schools are GMC approved, so you become a doctor regardless of what university you study at. The culture and support the university offers is often more important than the prestige of the university. So don't let ranking alone choose the universities for you. Look at all the factors I've discussed in the video, like the lifestyle, the culture and the campus, as these are the things you're going to notice more during your time at university. So to summarise, when picking your medical schools, make sure you met their entry requirements and their teaching style aligns with how you learn and that you're happy with the university's location and lifestyle and you know exactly what to expect once you receive an interview offer from them. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you've got interviews coming up, make sure to check out my last video as it will help you feel a lot more prepared. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.